Hey, what's up, everybody? So today we're going to be looking at the Audio Assault Reamp Studio plugin. Stay tuned. So today we're going to look at this plugin from Audio Assault. And let me just tell you up front, this thing right now only costs about 10 bucks. It's normally listed for about 109 bucks, but right now it's on sale for way less. So, I don't know how long it's going to last, but I will say that you get quite a bit for your money. So with that said, let's go ahead and go through some of the features of this plugin. Now, it has a built-in tuner, which is nice. I think all these plugins should have that. The one cool thing about this plugin right off the bat that's a little bit different than some of the other plugins that I use is the scalability is, you know, not fixed. You could actually make it as big or as small as you want. Uh, that's really nice. This particular plugin is not just an amp plugin or a couple amps, it's a whole host of different amps in the plugin. And we'll go through the amp section. It also has a pedal section a cab section as well as its own post EQ effects rack. So first off, let's go through the amps. Now I think you'll notice the categories here are a little bit unique. Uh, they have a category just for solid state amps. Now that's really rare. You don't see a whole lot of people um, simulating solid state technology. Especially not a Line 6 Spider. Let's see what that sounds like. Now if you've ever owned a Line 6 Spider, you'll recognize that really thin, kind of gritty, hyper nasally tone. I mean it's it's not a great tone in most circles, but it's kind of unique that they have it here and it's, you know, kind of cool. So moving on from that, they also have a valve state marshal and they have a whole, you know, swath here of different Randall solid state amps. What's kind of crazy about the solid state stuff is they've done a pretty good job of getting it kind of flat and compressed and a little bit more, I don't know, blocky sounding. It just it just has a little bit more of that, you know, non-tube quality to it. it. There's like no sag. It's very straight and percussive almost, but not particularly in a good way. I don't think that's where this plug-in shines, so let's go on. So beyond that, they have rock, metal, high gain. Metal and high gain typically go hand in hand, but you know perhaps you'll see that the metal stuff and the high gain stuff might be for different styles of high gain playing, uh, crunch, and then clean. And you know each of these categories has a whole host of different amp simulations. I think all in all, you're getting. You know, over 50 amps, you know, in this one plugin for 10 bucks. So with the rock tones, you'll see you got a Bugera, you got a few Marshalls here, you got the whole suite of JCMs, 800, 900, 2000. Uh, then you have a couple Plexis. Um, so let's just go to the JCM 800 and see what that sounds like. Let's go ahead and jump all the way to the JCM 2000. A little bit more of that upper mids uh, crunch going on. And they even have a plexi. All of which, to me, 
do encapsulate that real Marshall sound. Now I haven't messed with the cab section at all. Um, you know, take this Marshall Plexi, let's go over to the cab section uh, without getting too far into the cabs here. I'll just pull one out of the classic pack. Let's pull out a, a, a 412 Marshall cabinet. Um, let's pull out the 1960s with the B30s. Or even go down to the JCM 800 412. Uh, they got a greenback 412 or a G12 900 too. So we'll, we'll get into the cabs here in a minute. So yeah, I think you get the idea of where those kind of rock tones come from. Going back to the amps, uh, let's go to the metal. So they have like the diesel V4, and this is just an awesome sound. I mean, even with that JCM 800 cab, you know, we, we can even go through and load up the matching cab here. Let's look at the metal pack. I guarantee, that, yeah, there's a diesel 412 in here. Pretty cool. Uh, let's go back to the amp. So we got diesel, we got angles, we got a Framus. Interesting. Don't see too many of those uh, simulated. We got the Mesa rectifiers, PV6505. You got every high gain amp, metal amp that you could ever think of. You got the Soldano SL1 or SL100 or SL100. It's there. Let's see what that sounds like. And I'm already going to tell you I need to match it with probably. Let's go with the Zilla. Oversized V30. Moving on, they also have the high gain stuff. So this is not necessarily a metal focused high gain section and that's kind of nice because sometimes you're not always playing metal but you want a lot of gain so you have things like the orange you have things like a Friedman a, a bunch of Friedmans the BE100 that's like totally a classic Friedman sound even through the Zilla cab you know I don't think you can get this much versatility out of any other plugin I was surprised by how much 10 bucks got me or yeah, orange the Mesa Mark II, Mark IV, the TC50. Okay, yeah. So I mean, you're you're just you have everything here. Uh, go over to the Crunch. You got another orange Macro Dark. You got a few PVs, the Carvins. Yeah, they even have a Carvin. Uh, <laughs> I think it's like the Carvin Legacy amp. Same, you know, simulation here. You you basically have every amp you'd ever heard about. Let's go to the Clean Tones. And they have one of my favorite clean tones here, the uh, Roland uh, 120, the JC120. Yeah, I mean, that's just really cool. So let's move on to the cab section and kind of go over what that really is. And for this, I'm going to go, let's go back to the metal stuff. This is what my, my channel is about, metal. I really dig their emulation of the Engel Fireball. We'll keep that going. I'm going to dial this in a little bit to what I know I like. And here, when you buy this plug-in, you get access to these cab packs. You have a metal cab pack, a Mesa cab pack, just all Mesa Boogie um, style cabs, and then the classic pack which has um, they have the Fenders, they have the Marshalls, 
They have their own Audio Assault Custom 412 Creamback Cab, a Greenback one, and then one with V30s. So, you know, they've kind of dialed in some of their own um, IRs based off of, you know, their own speaker combos. And if you go to the Mesa Pack, you get your, your Mark IV 112, so much smaller sounding cab. You got the rectifier with the greenbacks, V30, 412, and all the way down through, you know, ha full stack, half stack, a Road King, traditional V30. You just got everything. Um, and then if we go to our metal cab pack, again, you got an Ingle, a Diesel, an HVT, Orange, PV Randall, Vox, and then the Zillas. So, good amount of stuff. And the other thing is, these are all the flex cab packs that they offer. So with the flex cabs, it's very similar to some of the other companies who have basically developed, you know, an IR. So we'll go to a metal pack. We'll just say, let's go with the, D, uh, let's stay with the Zilla 412. You click on this little microphone here and then you can move the mic back, forward, and then away from the cone, you know, and all that. So you get like this, you know, three-dimensional space to kind of move the mic around which is something that I think you've seen Neural DSP has uh, ML Sound Labs they all have something that you know does this kind of thing and it's really handy to kind of have that <laughs> Not only that, but we also have a stereo IR loader here. So you can actually add a different cab on the other side. And let's go with the flex cab. Let's go with the Mesa V3. Uh, that's kind of too similar. Let's go with the <clears throat> let's go with the Mark Five Mark Four One Twelve. And let's go ahead and go all the way over there. If you go over to Cab B. <laughs> So yeah, you, you can mix and match cabs. There might be a little bit of phasing issue though with uh, blending here, because it sounds a little bit weird. I'll have to figure that out. But either way, if you have your own custom IRs, you can load them in here, kind of mess with them, blend them around, see what you like. The other thing that they come with outside of the flex cabs is they have just some standard um, cabinet styles, uh, Boogie 412, uh, G12 with a 421 microphone and with a thick EQ on it. So there's some other options here to kind of play around with. Now these cabs, you know, if I go to one, let's go to the 50, the, you know, the, the UK V30 with the 57 with a balanced EQ curve. No longer can I click on that microphone and actually mess around with it, but it's a pretty good sounding cab by itself. <laughs> And one thing I've noticed with the non-flex cabs um, is that they, they have a little bit more of a natural room sound to them. I don't know why that would be, but as I click through them and I look, you know, and I listen, let's go with the red backs. <laughs> to me, they have a little bit more of a realistic microphone sound. V30s, the 57. <laughs> Definitely worth checking out. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go with one of the flex cabs. I'm gonna go with the rectifier oversized with the V30s, pretty classic sound. I have the angle fireball going. I think that sounds pretty good. I'm gonna keep it on the one cab for now. And then let's go to the stomp boxes. So. So when we go to the pedal section here, I think you'll see that there's all these different categories, overdrive, high gain, FX, fuzz, distortion, boosts. And you know, just going to the overdrive, you see they have like the Max and DS9's distortion, the SD1, so that's like a Boss SD1, and then a TS9. Um, don't want two of those. I'm gonna keep the TS9 in the first spot. 
But you got three banks to go off of. So TS9, let's go to, uh, let's give ourselves a little bit of, uh, well, I can do a chorus here. Let's load up a boost. So disengage the boost, disengage the chorus. Right now I still have the angle fireball and I have that Mesa oversized V30 cab. Uh, so let's make sure our D TS9, our Tube Screamer 9 is engaged. And I'm gonna set it up kind of like I would in the real world. I'm gonna turn it all the way up. I'm gonna get the tone about 75% and I'm gonna keep the drive down to make it more of like a clean boost. <laughs> Without it, that really does kind of emulate that, uh, what the tube screamer will do if you turn that drive up and you have that tone tacked. Let's switch this out for the Max and see what that does. Same thing. It's not quite as drivey as the uh, Tube Screamer. Turn the tone up, maybe get the drive up just a little bit. Let's swap it out for the Prince of Tone. That's pretty chuggy, so we'll turn that off. If I go back to the amp section a little bit, I could probably turn the gain up a little bit on that and maybe give myself a little more trouble and dial back the presence just a tad. <laughs> That's cool. That, I mean, that's as good as you can probably get. So let's move on to the boost. That's got a bit more grit to it, too. I mean... This is just a straight boost pedal, but I mean, to me, it's acting almost exactly like these uh, overdrive pedals are, which I guess when you turn the drive down on the overdrive, it's basically a boost pedal. Let's go ahead and go back to the jazz chorus real quick. So we're back at the Roland JC120 style. And let's go to the chorus. Pretty nice. What does the boost do on a clean setting? It does actually make it louder. Well, let's go with the delay, see what we got here.
So yeah, that's pretty cool. I think, you know, having all these pedal effects at your disposal just makes it a much more tweakable um, plugin. And, you know, you get to mix and match all you want. I'm going to keep that uh, Prince of Tone, though, going forward for the high gain stuff because I really like it with the Ingle Fireball. <laughs> So we've gone over the amps, the cabs, the stomp effects. Let's go to the FX rack and you can basically, you know, right click and, you know, you have graphic EQ, parametric EQ, delay, reverb, chorus, compressor. I like to use parametric EQs, kind of like a global EQ sometimes. Low pass filter, high pass filter, three bands. You know, obviously you got your your spread of how how wide or narrow you want that band of cut or boost to be. Um, sometimes I'm a fan of you know we're at 500 hertz right now, going down to about three 320, and sometimes scooping out a little bit of that mid range. <laughs> It just kind of cleans up a little bit of the mud. If you t scoop it too much, though, you get that like whoop 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 sound. You don't want that. So bring it back up a little bit. Maybe negative. We'll go with negative five. Be a little bit more surgical. And then if you want to get rid of some of that really low, low stuff, just turn that high pass filter up a little bit, maybe take it up to about 60, somewhere in there. Get rid of some of the fizz by using the low pass filter. I mean, anything above 14K, in a guitar high gain circuit, you're not going to hear much. So I even like to bring it down to about 10K. We'll go 10.5. And that just cleans up some of that high end fizz. So, in addition to the, uh, you know, adding the EQ post which is always nice to kind of clean up that sound. Uh, they got delays, reverbs, chorus, compression. You know, compression, you have to be kind of careful with how you use it. Uh, it can be kind of cool. It's better for clean tones. You can use it on high gain, but you got to really dial it in. And really all you're looking for is to get that initial attack really punchy uh, without just completely distorting the crap out of your uh, signal. So now that we've looked at most of what this plugin's capable of, I'm going to take this Ingle Fireball tone, I'm going to put it into a mix, I'm going to snag a few other tones out of this plugin, and we'll see what it sounds like. And in doing so, I'm going to use this Schecter C7 Deluxe. This is the newest guitar to my, you know, collection, uh, EMG 81 and 85. I decided to white it out, white pickup rings, you know, got the tone ninja locking tuners and it's you know, I winterized it so let's see what this thing sounds like
So that's the run through of the Audio Assault Reamp Studio plugin. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Later.